Hello, my name is Jake, and I'm going to show you how to follow a line using the Spike robot, uh, specifically programming it in Python. So hopefully I, this video won't just teach you how to follow a line, but will also show you some tips and things about Python that you can take moving forward. So let's start at the top. Here we have a series of import statements, which they will most likely be automatically generated for you, but they're still important nonetheless. What they do is that they let you use code from different parts of uh, the, uh, from different modules that you didn't write yourself. So the details of what exactly an import does aren't super important to following a line. Just know that if you don't have these at the top of your program, it's most likely not going to work. So now moving on, uh, this is some more setup before the robot actually starts moving. We have to access our motors and our sensor. So to do that, we want to create some motor and sensor objects. These objects will are our way of interacting with and um, hearing back from these different physical components of the robot. So here we have our color sensor object, which we use this, uh, we use this name that we imported um, up here. Um, you can see it behind the knowledge base. Um, we can use that name and then these parentheses to indicate that we're creating an object. And then we pass an argument to that this B indicating that this is going to be plugged into, uh, and then we do similar things for the left and right motor being plugged into port C and D. Now we move on to the actual meat of the code, the part where we actually get the robot to start moving. So here, I didn't have any specific criteria that I wanted to cause the robot to stop moving. So instead I set up a loop for it to follow or a loop for it to run, and I just had the loop run for an arbitrary number of times. So here um, we set up the variable so we can we know how many times we've gone through this loop, and we're going to use a while loop. Now, in this case, you could also use a for loop, but um, a while loop is most likely more what you're going to use when you do line following because you want to. There's probably going to be some external. Um, uh, indicator that you want to keep moving until you hit. So here we have our while loop, which means that all of the code in here, we are going to execute while this statement is true. So while count is less than 200, we are going to run this code. Um, it's important that you note know the indent. This is how Python uh, keeps track of loops and um, conditional statements like ifs. Every time you indent, that means that you're inside another loop or another conditional or another enclosure of some sort. So your, your indentation is important. So here we have um, a debugging statement. Our debugging statements like this don't actually help the robot move um, down the line, but they are important in case your robot doesn't do what you expect it to do. You want to get some sort of output from the robot, learn what it thinks it's doing, and use that to figure out what's going wrong. So here we have a print statement, which will print to the console down here, when called. And what are we going to print? Well, we are going to print this. So the quotes mean that we are are not referring to any uh, variables or any sort of syntax that everything inside the quotes is literally that character. So we will use the, uh, the word light and then a colon. And then these braces are one exception to what I said earlier about using literally what is inside the quotes because these, uh, these two braces, we want to replace those with something. We don't want to actually print out two braces. That's not useful. So what we use is this function here called format. And what format does is that it's going to look for these braces throughout um, our string, and it's going to replace that, them with whatever is put in here, because this is the argument that we were passing to the format function, and that's what it's going to put in the braces. So here, we want to uh, replace our braces 
with the value of the colors of the light, reflected light received from the color sensor. So we get that by, we use our color sensor object that we declared before, and then we call this function get reflected light on the object. Now it's important, you see this dot here indicates that we are specifically calling this get reflected light function in reference to this object. Um, so that way the program knows what sensor or what object it should be going into in order to get the information necessary to complete this function call. And then uh, once it gets that, then it's going to replace these two braces over here with whatever value is gotten from uh, this call. And then it will print out to the console and we can see what the robot thinks it's seeing below it. Now we get on to the part of the code that actually moves the robot. So here we want to know what to do if the robot sees white. Uh, in order to figure out if the robot is seeing white or black, we want to use an if statement because there's two different cases. Either we're on the white or we're on the black. And then we want to use color.getReflectedLight like we did before to see what value is coming back into the color sensor. Now this value, in order to learn more about what exactly this outputs, we have this knowledge base over here, which is super helpful. We click on the color sensor collapsible, and here you even see how to initialize it like we did before. There's this import that I mentioned earlier, and then there's the object call that I talked about. So you can, it has that there for you, as well as a bunch of information on the different types of functions in, that you can call on this object. All the different things you can do with the color sensor. You can get the color, you can get the ambient light, you can get the reflected light. Um, and each of these you can open up like here, and it will give you even more detailed information. For example, what we're using is get reflected light. So it wants to see what is being reflected into the color sensor, and then it wants we want that uh, parsed into essentially a grayscale value so we understand how bright or dark it is. So we know that it will return the reflected light intensity. We know that it will be an integer or a number. And we know that it will range from zero to 100. And so if we see zero, that means that we are looking at something pitch black, there's no, there's no light. And if it's 100, it's very bright light, which most likely means we're looking at the white part. Now, just because you're seeing black or white doesn't necessarily mean that the reflected light is going to be zero or 100. Um, just because different lighting conditions can lead to different um, different intensities of what you're going to see reflected back at you. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to, on your own, uh, get make some print statements, set up your light sensor, and see what values work best for your line to differentiate between the white part and the black part. Here, for my line, 50 worked pretty well. Um, so now that we understand that we are on the white part of the line, we want to move, uh, have our motors move in a certain way. Now, one thing that's important is that we use the start at power function. A long time when you move a motor, you might have a certain number of rotations or a certain amount of time you want the motor to run for. Here, we want the motor to run until, until we just don't want it to run anymore. So, for example, we want, if we are on the white part of the line, we want the left motor to move at this power and we want the right motor to stop moving at all. This is going to be equivalent to the very sharp turning uh, demo that you will see later, which um, is much better at hitting uh, tighter turns on lines, but it's, it's a lot slower. Um, one other thing to note, I have a negative 35 here. This is not normal. This is just the way that my robot is set up. The left and right motors are flipped. Um, normally, you would want the left motor and the right motor to have positive mean you go forward, negative mean you go backward. Uh, but here, just because of the way that my robot is set up, I need to use a negative value in order for the motor to actually um, move in the way that I want it to. So this is what we do if we see white. Now, if we see black, we want to go to this else statement. Um, this else indicate is what gets called if this value here is false. So if color.reflected light is less than or equal to 50, we are going to call this code. And now what this code does is that we know we're, we're off the black line. Now we want to, uh, or that means that we're on the black line, it means that we want to turn off of it to get back onto the white. So that way we're kind of 
wiggling between the black and the white line. So here we want to tell the left motor to stop moving and the right motor to start moving. And at the end, we want to increment count so that way we it will eventually hit 200 and our robot will eventually stop. And at the very end, we turn off our motors uh, because if you don't explicitly tell them to turn off, they'll keep running forever. So you tell the left motor and the right motor to go to power zero and then just for completeness, we print out that the program is over. Now, you can get different types of performance out of a very simple structure like this just by changing uh, the values and the speeds that you set the motors to run at. For example, here, uh, we're going to be making very sharp turns and we're going to be wiggling a robot to get around on the line, but it's going to be really slow if you have a straightaway. So in order to become more optimized for, nest for maybe straighter paths, you may want to change the values to something like this. Now, when we're on the white part of the line, we aren't going to make a hard turn back onto the black part. Instead, the left motor is just going to go a little faster than the right motor. So we're going to nudge our little bit just to the right and kind of veer very slightly or drift a little bit towards the line. And then when we see black, instead of hard turning back onto the white, instead we want to, we want to still turn back a little harder but we don't want to just make a hard pivot because we still want to keep our forwards momentum. So we make the right motor go a lot faster than the left motor. What this creates is kind of a bouncing motion where it'll hit the line and it'll bounce off and it'll hit the line and it'll bounce off. But since we're always moving forward with both motors, the end result is much, much faster. Uh, and now I'll take you over to go see the actual uh, demos of what this code looks like in action. I'll be now demoing the two line follower settings I showed. This first one, this first one makes tighter turns with the robot, which slows it down, but enables it to follow sharper curves on the black line. The second setting, on the other hand, is tuned to follow a straighter line. Notice how the robot moves faster, but the turns that it makes are much looser. This enables it to follow a straighter line, but it will fail on tighter curves as, like the ones shown before. 